Bismillahi walhamdulillahi assalatu wassalamu ala rasulillah amma ba'd rabbi shrahli sadri wa yassirli amri wa hlul uqdatam min lisani yafqaw qawli Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh my dear brothers today inshallah we will continue our study of surah al-araf and we will try our best inshallah to complete ayah numbers 126 until 150 just like every other lesson we'll start with the lessons or actions from our previous class number 1 prosperity in this world is not a guarantee of success in hereafter for both individuals and nations if you recall the context was that allah subhanahu wa taala was stating his formula of how he directs and how he warns nations to get them back on track when they are uh, not following the guidance so how allah subhanahu wa taala first gives them hardships but when they do not listen then he eases it out and then lets them go astray in their ease and until a point comes that they realize that you know we are in living in such good times and maybe you know our god is happy and nothing bad can happen to us and that's when he seizes them so this is uh, so prosperity in this world having a great life having wealth um is not a guarantee for success in the hereafter in fact we should be cautious as individuals as well as as uh, nations and the action was we have to follow allah subhanahu wa taala's guidance it is the only way to jannah so if you are on guidance regardless of if you are rich or a poor be it you are a country or you are an individual um guidance is the only way that you can reach jannah action number 2 was once truth has been revealed we have to accept it and this came in the context of if you remember uh, the story of musa alaihi salam and firaun and the magicians who were presented there to challenge musa alaihi salam while musa alaihi salam uh, beat them and uh, from the miracle of allah subhanahu wa taala and the magicians realized that it was not magic and they just kneeled, uh, kneeled down in front of their lord and they asked for forgiveness so that should be our attitude we should be open we should know that when truth is coming in front of us we should accept it and accepting truth means that we implement it in our lives regardless of whatever sacrifice is required so if you recall the uh, pharaoh told them that i will kill you all and i will punish you and i will crucify you i will cut one hand and one leg and all of the cruel things he said but they said that we have now started to believe in our rab and he is our protector the same discussion will continue from the aya so the response of uh, the magicians and the people that were there in the court who now started believing in the rab of musa alaihi salam allah subhanahu wa taala auz billahi minash shaitanir rajim bismillahir rahmanir rahim wa ma tanqimu minna illa an amanna bi ayati rabbina lamma ja'atna and not you take revenge from us so now they are saying you should not take revenge from us except that now we have believed in the signs of our lord when they came to us so now we have seen the clear miracle why do you want to take revenge from us rabbana afrigh alaina sabran wa tawaffana muslimin our lord pour upon us patience so this is a dua and a prayer that they ask allah subhanahu wa taala our lord pour upon us patience so we need a lot of patience from you and cause us to die as muslims i think this is an amazing dua that we can remember especially when we are share, uh, when we face any hardship especially when there is a threat of life or you feel threatened this is an amazing dua to ask allah subhanahu wa taala oh our lord pour upon us patience and cause us to die as muslims as steadfast wa qala al malau min qaumi firauna uh so and said the chiefs of the people of firaun so the his ministers firaun's ministers who were there uh, in that court room where all of this was happening they told firaun what did they say atadaru musa wa qaumahu li yufsidu fil ardi wa yadaraka wa wa alihatak so will you leave musa and his people so that they can cause corruption in the earth and forsake your gods so now they are challenging your religion they are saying there is only one Uh, ila or allah subhanahu wa taala qala so what did firaun said qala sanu 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 qatilu abnaahum wa nas uh, wa nastahyi nisaahum so firaun said we will kill their sons and we will let live their women so this is something that they also did when at the time when uh, firaun saw a dream and when musa alaihi salam was about to be born that you know there will be a person who will be challenging you so he asked at that point in time from bani israel so he asked at that point in time to kill all the 
uh, uh, the boys and the, the babies who were being born as sons, so kill all of them and just leave the daughters. And obviously they used to humiliate the women and daughters who were left. So he said, we're going to bring back. So the same punishment. Now look at the arrogance of Firon. So he's saying, and indeed we are the subjugators over them. We have total control over them. We are their masters. We can do whatever we want. So we have power over Bani Israel. And we can do whatever we want. Now look at the response of Musa alayhi salam to his people. Qala Musa li qawmihis ta'inu billahi wasbiru. Musa said to his people, seek help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and be patient. So this is the time that we have to be patient. Innal arda lillah. Indeed, the earth belongs to Allah. So today, uh, you know, he, uh, Piran and his ministers and his army and all of these people are thinking that they are powerful. However, the earth and this dominion belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yuritsuha man yasha'u min aibadi. He causes to inherit it whom he wills of his servants. So this is also a message for us. All of the things that we own, the houses, or even if we get into power, or if we are part of the government, or if we are part of the rulers, like, we need to understand that all of this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He can give it to any of his servants and he can also take it back. If we become arrogant, then he can take it back and he can replace us with better people, better servants of his. And the end is for the righteous. At the end, righteous people will be the winner. Qalu udina min qabli. So his people, his nation replied to Musa alayhi salam. They said, we have been harmed from uh, before you came to us and now from after you have come to us. So they said, you know, we have been hardship. We have been hardship since a long point in time and now you are in front of us. So, I mean, we do not feel, I mean, they, they were just saying that, you know, we have been continuously in hardships. Now, Musa alayhi salam, what did he say to his people? He said, perhaps your Lord will destroy your enemy and make you successes in the earth. You can overtake the land that they possess, then see how you will do. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so now you are oppressed, so it's a test for you, if you will be patient. But when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives power over your enemy and once you are the rulers of lands and once you have wealth and everything, again Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will test on how you do, how you take care of that responsibility and the power that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you and how will you utilize it to provide justice on the lands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلَقَدْ أَخَذْنَا عَلَى فِرْعَوْنَا بِسْسِينِينَ وَنَقْسِمْ مِنَ السَّمَرَاتِ and certainly we seize the people of Firon with years of famine and a deficit of the fruit so that they may receive admonition. So now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, so as I mentioned earlier as well, there were multiple um, uh, hardships that came to the people of Firon just to get them back on track on guidance as a sign from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that Firon and his people and, and all the people, they were faced with uh, famine where you know there was uh, there was no food uh, lack of food and the fruits so you know the lands were barren so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remind them as uh, uh, so that they receive admonition and they remember the right message and they get on guidance and they ask forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala however uh, what was their response once they received hardship but when they came to them, the good, they used to say, of course, this is for us. Yes, we are the reason. I mean, we deserve all the good that, uh, that is coming on our way. And if afflicts them something bad or something bad used to happen, they used to ascribe evil omens to Musa and the people who were with him, the Bani Israel. So they used to say, okay, whenever a hardship used to come, they used to say, okay, now it's because of Musa and his people and the evil things. Because they are the ones who are evil. So when we are facing any famine or we are facing any um, uh, lack of food, let's say, or, or or those conditions, hard conditions, then it is because of Musa and his people. Allah in nama ta iruhum in the lahi wala kinna aksarahum la ya lamun. Behold, only their evil omens are with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but they do not, most of them do not know. So basically, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying 
that the hardships that they are facing are coming from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that they can get some sense and they can remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and get back to guidance. Uh, yes, Ahmad, uh, uh, your hand is raised. Please, please go ahead. Yes, so wanted to ask, so here it says evil omens. So my dad told me that like good omens are allowed in Islam. But what's the difference between omens and superstition then? I think, okay, so we should not be superstitious, that's for sure. But here, evil omens here, it's a translation of this word, but basically it means any bad thing or hardship that came. So any negative thing when used to come to them, they used to ascribe it. But it's not, uh, it's not uh, related to superstitious things. It's like any hardship or evil or bad thing. Okay? Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Sure. Most welcome. Moving forward. وَقَالُوا مَحْمَا تَعْتِنَا بِهِ مِنْ آيَاتِ لِتَسْحَرَنَا بِهَا فَمَا نَحْنُ لَكَ بِمُؤْمِنِينَ And they said, whatever you bring us there with of the sign, so that you bewitch us with it, then not we will be in you, uh, in you as believers. So basically they were responding to Musa alayhi salam, regardless of whatever sign you want us and you know you are doing, you are showing all of this as, a, as an evil thing or some hardship that is coming, it's because of you. Still, we will never believe you. So they are taking this hardship that is coming as an evil attack or, you know, a negative thing coming from Musa and his, uh, and his followers and his companions, the Bani Israel. And they are saying, we will not believe you, regardless of whatever evil things you would do to us or whatever hardships will come to us. So I've taken this negatively versus thinking that this is a hardship and maybe we need to revert to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Maybe we need to uh, get back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ask for it forgiveness. No, they're not thinking like this. They're saying, no, we will fight and we are, we are against this and, you know, we will still not be believers. So we sent on them the flood and the locusts. Locusts are these insects who used to come and eat their crops. And the lice and the frogs and the blood as signs manifest. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent multiple hardships on them. One after the other, one after the other. So that they can see this as a sign and go back for forgiveness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. First takbaru wa kanu qawmam mujrimeen. But what was their resp uh, response? But they showed arrogance and they were a criminal people. They were evil people. They had arrogance in their hearts. So to start off with, they were evil from inside and because they had bad intentions, so they could not see any of these signs and they remained arrogant. They persisted with their arrogance. And when fell upon them the punishment, they said, Ya Musa, uh, Ya Musa da'u lana rabbaka bima ahida indak. O Musa, invoke for us your Lord by what he has promised to you. If you remove from us the punishment, surely we will believe for you and surely we will send you with the children of Israel. Now they started to realize when the punishments really increase, now they are getting back to their senses. Now they're saying, O Musa, please ask your Lord or please pray to him to save us um, and to remove from us the punishment. If the punishment goes away, surely we will start to believe in you and we will send your the Bani Israel that you wanted, the people you want to take them away to a different land. We will allow you and you can take them away. Then what happened? <laughs> But when we remove from them the punishment, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removed all the punishments and the hardships till a fixed term to check them. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removed the hardship for a certain period of time, which they were to reach it. Then they broke their word. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knew that they had evil intentions in their heart. As soon as the punishment went away, they broke their word. And they said again, no, we will not believe. And they started to persecute the people of Bani Israel. So basically, there is a point to note and an action for us. In good times, they said it's because of us. So if you recall, if you look at the previous three, four ayahs, and if you were to summarize the content of them, in good times, they're saying, ah, of course, it's because of us. You know, all the good things are coming because of our efforts and everything. 
while in bad times they attributed it to evil so they said no it's evil and it is coming from musa alaihi salam and his people and everything they blamed others however at the end they reverted to allah subhanahu wa taala as well so they blamed it to others and to evil but then said allah uh, musa please ask allah your lord allah subhanahu wa taala to save us and take away the punishment however when the punishment was taken away again they broke their promise so this behavior and this summary if we were to take an action for our own selves then how would you relate to it the current the current times that we are living in there are they, these are the behaviors also shown by people so how does it relate today to our situation so how are we reacting in good times as well as hard times can anyone give me an answer any example any explanation that comes to your mind yes nuruddin please go ahead so i think this is just clear that sir that we have to be more doing worship of allah subhanahu wa taala in good time as well brilliant brilliant answer nur i think you have already presented the slides that are about to come omar you were about to say something please go ahead okay nothing okay okay good so basically you are right and let's take an example to understand this point yeah aziz go ahead you have to say something go ahead so when go in good times um people people like say oh this is all because of our hard work and our efforts and um in hard times when people just like become depressed and they're like why does it have to happen to me i'm such a nice person and why and then if they believe in allah then they're like oh well, why did allah do this to me and i'm i'm such a good person and stuff like that Yes, correct. Brilliant answer, Aziz. Um, Ahmed, your hand is raised. You want to add something? Yeah. So people are blinded. Like, um, so everything that happens, like everything good that happens to them, um, they they think it's all their hard work. And in hard times, they it's like like they they give them. self like self priority so so they don't think of anybody else just themselves so they, they think allah. if something bad is happening then it's everybody else if something good is happening it's only them so brilliant you know. brilliant answers jazakumullah khairan all of you huh? uh, yes umar go ahead the thought of allah only comes when you are in hardship and then when you are in good times it says uh okay i forgot no problem when hard times come then only i will remember allah excellent jazakumullah khairan guys i think you guys have already presented uh, you know what i wanted to share but let us just take everything that you guys said is correct brilliant thank you so much um we'll take just take a quick example and it is exactly explaining what you guys said a person for example he gets a high paying job you know with a lot of benefits so he has a nice car and they're giving him bonuses and all of this big salary you know how he thinks and how people around them think he thinks because of it is uh, because of his own efforts because you know i got that education i have that amazing experience i have worked in different uh, companies and these multinationals or whatever i have these certifications so because of all my hard work and effort you know i'm getting this job and then they start to enjoy life and everything else however what happens if he loses his job and he is unable to find the next job and there is an in between period a, a tough period a hardship that comes to him as you guys said they start to blame others and they start to think that ah oh, maybe something evil is happening somebody is you know hatching a it's an evil eye or somebody is doing an evil magic on me or someone else it's it's their plan Uh, i did not get the job because you know they are probably taking people by whatever uh, favoritism and all of these things and then after a more more time passes more hardships come in and uh, let's say they did not still get the job then they remember allah subhanahu wa taala and then they are asking everybody to pray to them and they are even going to 
these people whom they think they are more uh, you know islamic and learned and all please pray for me and tell me what can i recite and tell me the you know the combination of surahs and these things and ayahs that they do so that just to you know uh, get over this hardship their focus is they need to get out of the hardship and they are willing to do anything to go back to those previous prosperous times the issue here is as you guys rightly said and i think umar at the end summarized it really well we connect with allah subhanahu wa taala only when hardships fall and only for the time they last so we are there we are asking we are seeking to allah subhanahu wa taala when the hardship is upon us and it's a tough time as soon as allah subhanahu wa taala improves that situation then again uh, you know we go back to our normal ways this is exactly what those people did as we learned so allah subhanahu wa taala gave them several hardships multiple initially they said no 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 it's evil coming from you musa and your people and bani israel you guys are the cause of this evil we they continued to say arrogant as soon as hardships became more and more suddenly they realized oh please let us go back to musa and ask his uh, lord to to save us from this punishment if he does we will believe and we will follow you and we will let the bani israel go with you but at the end what happens Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is saying when the punishment was removed they again went back and broke their promise so the action for us is we have to always stay connected with Allah Subhanahu wa Taala at all times to be truly content this means that we have to be thankful during good times to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala and be patient during hardships this yeah. way even hardships become easier for us Uh, to go through when we are connected with Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, so we have to be patient during hardships. Continue praying to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and during good times, we have to be thankful. We have to remember, and during good times as well, if it is about prosperity and wealth, we have to continue helping others uh, as a thank uh, to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala uh, as well. Yes, Omar, you wanted to contribute something. Please go ahead, sir. Uh, I just wanted to say, like Faron. he was not believing and last one at all when he was having the power but when musa alaihi salam fled and he like uh, parted the sea uh, the river yeah, and then he followed it yeah. and then when the waters closed he said ya la i believe in you you are the god but that did not count because when exactly. he fled hardship then he only he believed but then it was too late so i think we have to understand that we have to start believing in allah subhanahu wa taala when we have the option and when we have the time time is so precious for us we cannot lose time we don't know when we will die we don't know when the truth will be revealed to us when we die truth will reveal be revealed to us when we are so close to death when we are facing death that's when the truth will be revealed to us and then it will be too late to go back to allah subhanahu wa taala because every soul will realize the truth and they will reach out to allah subhanahu wa taala like umar said firaun even did that before his uh, you know before he was being uh, drowned in that uh, sea when he went so we have to realize that before time is out we have to take action and we have to follow guidance and we have to leave all the haram things and follow all the halal things and uh, live our lives according to islam and continue to thank allah subhanahu wa taala and be patient during tough times moving forward fan taqamna minhum fa aghraqnahum فِي الْيَمِّ بِأَنَّهُمْ كَذَّبُوا بِآيَاتِنَا وَكَانُوا عَنْهَا غَافِلِينَ so we took ret- ret- retribution so allah subhanahu wa taala took re- took revenge when they did not listen how we drowned from them in the sea because they denied our signs and they were to them heedless they were heedless they were not thinking so what happened is that musa alai salam uh, took bani israel and his people and they were trying to run away from the people of firaun and uh, and and his chiefs and his army and all they were following them the sea came in front of musa alai salam and his followers he put his asa his stick in the middle it parted it went uh, away and then he along with bani israel crossed that sea and while firaun and his people were about to come from the same passage the sea again uh joined and then you know they were all drowned and his entire army was drowned and then we'll continue to see uh what happened wa aurathna alqaum alladhina kanu kanu yustadafuna mashariq alardi wa magharibaha wa magharibaha allati barakna fiha and we made inheritors the people those who were considered weak so now the bani israel they were the owners the eastern parts of the land and the western parts of it which allah subhanahu wa taala blessed 
so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now made them the owners of that land um after the oppressors who were pharaoh and they were so arrogant and they were thinking they are so powerful they can do whatever they were you know um punished while the followers of musa alaihi salam and bani israel they were blessed with land that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them wa tammat kalimatu rabbika rabbikal husna ala bani israel and was fulfilled the word or the promise of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the best for the in the best possible way for the children of israel and this is what earlier musa alaihi salam also said that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the power to replace people and it's his land he can give he can make he can give to any of his slaves the dominion and the power to control the lands and we see here in this story it is getting fulfilled exactly as musa alaihi salam told his nation we must sabar because they were patient so all of this uh, 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 the the bounties there and the favor that allah subhanahu wa taala gave them was because they were patient wa dammarna ma kana yasnau firauna firaunu wa qaumuhu wa ma kanu yarishun and we destroyed what used to make firaun and his people and what they used to erect or what they used to Uh, raise against Musa alaihi salam and his people. So everything was destroyed. Their army, their power, everything. Waja was na bani Israel al Bahra, fa atau ala qaumi ya kufuna ala asnamil lahum. And we led across the children of Israel the sea. So they went through the sea. Then they came upon a people devoted to idols of their. So there were when they moved forward. they saw there were people who were worshiping idols now even bani israel i mean they kept on going through different um uh, hardships and yet they came upon a new uh, you know fitna or a challenge that they uh, got themselves uh, in so now what happened is when they crossed and when they now they came upon a nation who were idol worshipers so they were worshiping idols now look at their response even after seeing the miracle even after crossing the sea and even after seeing the the uh, what happened to firaun look at the response qalu they said ya musa jal lana ilaha kama lahum aliha aliha they said o oh musa make for us a god like what they have as god so now we also want idol so that we can worship we can look at them and we can focus and concentrate and all of this qala what did musa alaihi salam replied innakum qaumun tajhalun indeed you are ignorant people what you have seen you have seen such a big miracle you have seen the sign of allah subhanahu wa taala yet you are asking to do shit yet you are asking that you want to um worship idols like these that guys are doing inna ha ula i mutabbarum ma hum fihi wa batilum ma kanu ya'malun indeed these destroyed this, this is what they destroyed are in it vain and what they used to do so basically Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is saying that such elements or such wishes or such things as idol worship is something that is not useful at all, and this is what they used to do. Even the Pharaoh, so Pharaoh and his people, they were doing shirk and they had multiple gods, as we read in the previous ayah. And now this was the argument against Musa alayhi salam because he was asking them to worship Allah Sub Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala as one Lord. And then the entire miracle and the story of magicians and everything happened. so here he is reminding them that what these guys are doing idol worshiping and they have multiple gods this is what was destroyed and this is all in vain and this is what even the previous people whom you just saw getting punished uh, multiple hardships and then eventually getting punished in the sea you saw them doing the same thing still you are asking for the same uh, idol worshiping qala aghayr allah he said qala aghayr allah اب غيكم الها وهو فضل فضلكم على العالمين he said allah should uh, he said i should i seek uh, anyone other than allah subhanahu wa taala for you as god while he has preferred over he has preferred you over the worlds so we saw this earlier as well allah subhanahu wa taala said that bani israel have were preferred over the worlds because they were shown so many signs they were shown they were the preferred and chosen people there were so many prophets that came to them including musa alaihi salam so now he is saying after witnessing all of this i am allah's messenger in front of you now and you want me to seek other gods in place of allah subhanahu wa taala while he has also preferred you over the worlds while he has sent you so many messengers and i am one of his messengers uh, uh, musa alaihi salam himself uh, who's in who was standing in front of them 
so how come you can ask how are you asking even for other gods other than allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa iz anjaynakum min ali fir'auna yasumunakum su al azab and when we saved you from the people of fir'aun who were afflicting you with the worst of torment now allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding them as well so they were giving you the worst of torment what were they doing yuqatiluna abna'akum wa yastah tahyuna nisa'akum they were killing your sons and letting your women live wa fi dhalikum bala ummir rabbikum azim and in that was a big trial from your lord and was a great trial uh, that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, had for you wa 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 wa'adna musa thalathina laylatan wa atmamnaha bi asharin fatamma miqatu rabbihi arba'ina layla now another story of musa alaihi salam and when we appointed for musa 30 nights and we completed them and with 10 more so uh, was completed the set term of his lord of 40 nights so allah subhanahu wa taala invited musa alaihi salam with him for 40 nights to give him uh, the tawra and the instructions or guidance for bani israel to follow wa qala musa li akhihi harun luf lufni fi qaumi wa aslih wa la tattabi sabil al mufsidin Musa alayhi salam said to his brother Harun take my place in my people and do right and do not follow the way of the corrupter so you should lead my people while i am going away to allah subhanahu wa taala to receive the commandments and guidance while i come back and this is about it will take about 40 nights so as allah subhanahu wa taala mentions it earlier part of the quran uh, uh, of the same ayah walamma jaa musa li miqatina wa kal wa kallamahu rabbu and when came musa to our appointed place and allah subhanahu wa taala spoke to him so musa alaihi salam had this unique uh, uh, pleasure of speaking to allah subhanahu wa taala qala rabbi arini anzur ilaik he said oh my lord show me so that i may look at you now here musa alaihi salam shared a wish with allah subhanahu wa taala that you know because he was talking to allah subhanahu wa taala and out of love and out of curiosity he said allah subhanahu wa taala i really really want to want to see you قال لن تراني ولكن ولكن انظر الى الجبل فان استقر مكانه فسوف تراني he said never you can see me so allah subhanahu wa taala responded you can never see me however look at the mountain then if it remains in its place then you will be able to see me so allah subhanahu wa taala said no human eye can see me so similarly you will not be able to see me at least in your current form of course the biggest reward for muslims inshallah when we go to jannah is getting to meet allah subhanahu wa taala that and at that, that point in time allah subhanahu wa taala will give us the capability uh, to even look at him but here in our current capability allah subhanahu wa taala reminded musa alaihi salam that you will not be able to see me um, if you want to see just a um uh, 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 just a small thing then just look at that mountain if it remains in its place then you will be able to see me falamma tajalla rabbuhu lil jabali jalahu dakkan wa kharra musa saiqa so what happened is uh, but when allah subhanahu wa taala revealed his glory tajalla just a small part of this uh, allah subhanahu wa taala revealed his lord to the mountain he made it crumble to dust the entire mountain was destroyed and it just turned into dust and fell down musa alai salam unconscious and when he recovered he said glory be to my lord so what happened is that musa alai salam he fell down and he was totally unconscious so he tried to look at the mountain the mountain blew up in dust and smoke and musa alai salam with its impact he just fell back down and he was unconscious and when he gained consciousness what did he say falamma afaqa qala subhanaka tubtu ilayka wa ana awwalul mu'minin and when he recovered he said glory be to you allah subhanahu wa taala i turn in repentance to you i and i am the first of the believers he said that i am your biggest biggest believer glory be to you allah subhanahu wa taala uh, uh, definitely and no human eye can you know see allah subhanahu wa taala even that small thing he wasn't the mountain was not able to bear it so there is a sahi hadith regarding the appearance of allah subhanahu wa taala um the appearance of allah jalla jalalahu to the mountain was very little of him it was nothing it was just so minor uh, thing that allah subhanahu wa taala tried to reveal about himself it was approximately equal to the tip of one's little finger 
as explained by the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam when he recited this verse so while the holy prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam he was reciting this verse he said that this was a small thing he's just trying to explain us obviously this is all we cannot imagine uh, allah subhanahu wa taala or the little finger and all of this he's just trying to say that it was just a small small smallest part that one can imagine that allah subhanahu wa taala tried to reveal and that mountain the huge mountain it exploded and musa alaihi salam was unconscious that is the power of allah subhanahu wa taala's presence qala ya musa inni tafaituka ala an-nasi bi risalati wa wa bi kalami wa bi kalami he said o oh musa indeed um, you have been chosen over the people with my messages and with my words fa khuz ma ataituka wa kum min ash-shakirin so take what i have given you and be among the grateful wa katabna lahu fil alwahi min kulli shay'in mau'izatan wa tafsilan wa tafsilan li kulli shay' and we ordain laws for him in the tablets of everything and instruction and explanation for everything so now allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave all the instructions to musa alaihi salam in the form of tablets and all of those things that were written these were the instructions for bani sail to follow as allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's guidance and they were written down in detail in the form of tablets or stones that were given to musa alaihi salam fa khuz ha bi quwwatin wa wa amru wa mur qaumaka ya khuzu bi ahsaniha so take them with firmness and order your people to take the best of it so basically you need to take them with strongly take them meaning there can be so steadfast even when people go against you you have to stand tall and say no this is the guidance from allah subhanahu wa taala and they have to make uh, they they will feel the blessings of it so once they implement this guidance to their lives they will feel the blessing of it they will get the best of it and they'll get the best of the reward out of it so so u rikum dar al fasiqin i will show you at home the disobedient the defined defiantly disobedient and there will be some people who will continue to go against you and these are the one who are defiantly disobedient and then we will take them to a permanent home and where they will reside in it forever as a punishment so asrifu an ayati alladhina yatakabbaruna fil ardi bi ghayri al haq i will turn away from my signs those who are arrogant in the earth without right without being on the truth so here allah subhanahu wa taala is saying that i will turn away from my signs i will not guide those people who are arrogant from inside in the earth without the right some people say some people take this part of the uh, uh, aya and say i will turn away from my signs people those who are arrogant so they say ah now allah subhanahu wa taala is not giving us guidance if allah subhanahu wa taala want us to take us guidance even today some people think that you know if allah subhanahu wa taala wanted to follow us islam we would have followed islam but because you know he it's his will so we are not following islam no this is not right the thing allah subhanahu wa taala is saying he will turn away those people who are arrogant who have evil inside their hearts their intention is from the start is wrong they are skeptic and they are thinking ah maybe something is wrong they start when even when they start learning about islam quran and all of these things and the hadith of the holy prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam they want to find fault in it they have evil inside their heart which is why they get misguided so i will turn away from my signs those who are arrogant uh, in the earth without right who do not have any uh, they don't have the truth still they just go after uh, uh, against the message of islam and against the, my message wa in yaraw kulla ayati la yu'minu biha and if they see every sign still they will not believe in it wa in yaraw sabila sabir rushdi la yattakhizuhu sabila and if they see the way of the righteousness they will not take it as a way so even if i show them all the signs they will not believe in it when they see it with their eyes the right way and their heart says yes it is the right way still they will not follow it wa in yaraw sabila al ghaygi yattakhizuhu sabila but if they see the way of the error they will take it as a way as soon as they see the wrong way something that is inciting their desires or something that they uh, you know fulfilling their immediate desires they will take it ذلك بانهم كذبوا باياتنا وكانوا عنها غافلين 
that is because they denied our signs and they were amongst the heedless so who is heedless the word ghafilin heedless means that despite reminding them despite showing them signs despite doing everything they do not listen and do not see now um are you all with me alhamdulillah 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 i want you all to focus excellent i want you all to focus on the screen i will show you a picture and ask you a question so you see this person um he's just walking on a raking stick and hitting himself right what does this pic tell you about this person is he very careful and observing person what sort of a person is he who will tell me um, so he's, he's like a very clumsy person clumsy um, person so like he yeah. he maybe have a good night sorry oh man what did you say your voice is breaking he, he did not have a good night sleep <laughs> he did not have a good night sleep who else yes aziz go ahead you have um, i don't think he he has a 360 view so he like he can't everything. see everything yeah he is he just yeah as a such an observing person he's not an observing person he is not an observing person yes aziz you want to say something he is a bit um like clum like not observant he is not observant and he is clumsy yes uh, who else noor you have said it or do you want to say something your hand is raised so i get say that he is a careless person and he gets stop using mobile he is a careless person excellent and he gets stop using mobile sorry he is what he gets stop using mobile ah probably he was using using mobile and you are right by the way which is i have put it here no he is either distracted or he is not focusing so when you look at this person something like this happens and obviously he is not careful and he is not observing his surroundings and he is either distracted so you are right maybe he was on his mobile whatever but we don't see mobile around him on his hand or somewhere fallen there but let's say he was distracted or he was not focusing but what if i tell you again i need all of your 100% attention uh, sorry aziz you want to say something okay you I forgot you... to lower my hand sorry i forgot to lower my hand no problem no problem okay now um what if i tell you that this person was told that there is a raking stick on his way so while he was walking on this path he was told that you will find a raking stick in front of you so don't stumble upon it still he stumbled upon it so what would you think about that person ignorant ignorant he ignored it okay yeah he, yeah he, he's a fool so sir this is another <laughs> metaphor so like it's so like you do this a lot in your lessons i even pointed this out last time so it's a metaphor for this whole subject so yeah he he, he is in listing for the obstacles in his path and he's he's like he's like not focusing on what really matters exactly so even when you tell someone that you will find a raking stick in front of you and if he is not observing for the signs where is it i should not step on it and still he steps on it then this is what allah subhanahu wa taala is saying i will take you to the last part of the previous ayah and they were of them heedless wa kanu anha ghafilin ghafilin means heedless so even when you tell them that there is a raking stick coming on your way and just be watchful just look for the signs what are the signs that you will see something you know in front of you with uh, i don't know and you will step on it it will look like a stick or whatever still they do it that means they are heedless they don't listen so they just don't listen so this is um the lesson for us coming from these ayas that allah subhanahu wa taala actually the allah subhanahu wa taala is talking about bani israel but we should look at what is the lesson in these things for us as muslims today we cannot be heedless about the signs from allah subhanahu wa taala we cannot put this guidance aside we cannot put quran aside we cannot put hadith of the holy prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam aside we cannot do this otherwise we will be heedless because we know that you know what is about to happen to us once we die the truth will be revealed to us if still if we are heedless and we don't listen and we continue to do haram and we don't do halal things 
or we continue to do, do, go on the wrong path, then we are heedless. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't guide arrogant and heedless people. So if we are heedless and if we don't listen to the right guidance and we just shut it off, or if we have arrogance, ah, we are the ones, every good thing that I'm getting, every good job, I'm getting into a great university. Look at my grades. I got these many A's and all of this is because of me. And then the first thing happens, maybe you didn't get an admission in a university or a college you wanted to. Maybe you didn't get a job. Maybe you weren't, didn't get promoted. Maybe your business is not doing well. Uh, maybe something else happened. You wanted to marry, marry someone. It did not happen. The moment you face a hardship, the moment you are jobless and everything, then you realize now, oh my God, what happened? Uh, what happened to all my accomplishments? Okay, now let me seek help. And then if the hardship continues, you realize, okay, now I need to seek help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But once the hardship is over, again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you prosperity. You get a good job. Again, you start earning money. You get your wealth or you get into a great university and you start studying and everything. You say, ah, oh, look at me. Look at my grades and all of this. This is actually the lesson for us that is coming from this entire story of from Musa alayhi salam and uh, Bani Israel for us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't guide arrogant and heedless people. So we have to watch for the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and follow our life according to the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Holy Quran and the Hadith and Sunnah of the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Moving forward. وَالَّذِينَ كَذَّبُوا بِآيَاتِنَا وَلِقَاءِ الْآخِرَةِ حَبِطَتْ أَعْمَالُهُمْ And those who denied our signs and the meeting of the hereafter, their deeds are worthless. And this is not just for Bani Israel, this is also for us. People amongst us who deny the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and who say, ah, do you really believe in the Day of Judgment? Ah, do you believe in Jannah? And do you believe in this and that? Um, all of these people who are denying the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, their deeds are worthless in this world. And they will be recompensed uh, for what they used to do. Right? So they will, they will be recompensed. They will get that punishment for uh, everything that they used to do. And took the people of Musa from after him. Now let, let's see what happened. So Musa salam went to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where he was, uh, he was getting the guidance. He stayed there for 40 days and Arun alayhi salam, uh, Musa alayhi salam, uh, Musa alayhi salam uh, placed him with his people as a leader to take care of them and everything. Now look at what the people behind him did, the Bani Israel. And took the people of Musa from after him. What did they do? And they took the, the people of Musa from after him, from their ornaments, a calf, an image of it that was making a lowing sound. So there was basically a, a calf-like structure, like an idol, out of the ornaments and they created it. And it, when the wind used to blow from it, it used to make a sound. So it used to look like alive. What they did with it is, they did not see that could it speak to them and not guide them to a way. They took it for worship and they were wrongdoers. So basically, while Musa alayhi salam was gone, these people, they started worshipping that cow-like thing and, you know, that they created. And they said that now this is our Lord. So while Musa alayhi salam is going to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to take those instructions so that the Bani Israel can follow behind him, this is what is happening. And when it was made to fall into their hands and they saw that indeed they had gone astray. So basically it fell, it broke, it cannot do anything. Now they realized that, you know, now that we had gone astray. They said, uh, if our Lord doesn't have mercy upon us and if he doesn't forgive us, then surely we will be amongst the losers. Sorry, Saud, you want to say something? You are unmuted. Okay. No, no problem. Okay, we'll proceed. asifa. And when Musa returned to his people, he was angry and he was grieved. He was told that people started to uh, worship that uh, the, the cow-like thing and they started idol worshipping. 
khalaq tumuni min baadi he said evil is what you have done when you know after me in my place when i was away this is something that you have done is very evil and very bad aaj aaj jil tum amra rabbikum were you impatient over the matter of your lord you you became impatient you couldn't wait for me and you started worshiping another god while you have gone through with me with all the hardships you have seen all the miracles that were shown and you have seen the result of firon and those people who used to do idol worshiping still you were impatient and you couldn't wait for me to come and get you the right guidance from your lord wa alqal alwaha wa akhaza bi ra'si akhihi yajurruhu ilayhi and he cast down the tablets and seized by head his brother and dragged to himself so basically musa alaihi salam you know he was angry and he was strong as well and when he became angry that's how he took it out so he grabbed hold of his brother arun and he dragged to himself and he said qala abna umma innal qauma innal qaumas taz'afuni wa kadu yaqtulunani and he said o son of my brother meaning o my brother um indeed the people considered me weak and were about to kill me so basically he responded when musa alaihi salam grabbed him and and brought him close to him then harun alaihi salam responded to him that indeed the people considered me weak i'm not as strong as a leader like yourself so they considered me me weak and they were about to kill me so i really went after them i tried to stop them but i was weak in front of them and they were about to even kill me fala tush tushmit bil aada wala tajalni maal qaum is zalimin so let not rejoice over me the enemies and do not place me with the people who are wrong doing so basically if you hurt me or if you kill me then the enemies will be happy and do not place me with the enemies who are wrong doing i am not amongst the wrong doing people uh as you think because i tried my best to stop them they even became my enemies and they tried to kill me so i am not the one amongst fault i am not the one amongst the wrong doers so we will close this class today here are there any comments any questions before i move to the actions from this class okay that means everything is clear alhamdulillah let's go through actions from this class number 1 we have to stay connected to allah subhanahu wa taala at all the times to be content to have that content feeling during good times we have to be thankful during bad times we have to stay patient as we learn during this entire story of musa alaihi salam firon and then the bani israel um normally what happens is which is incorrect is that we connect with allah subhanahu wa taala only when hardships befall us and only the time that they last as soon as the hardship go away people start going back to their own ways and this is what allah subhanahu wa taala taught us from the story of bani israel that uh, once the hardship used was taken away from them as a test then they reverted back and broke their promise so what we have to do is always stay connected with allah subhanahu wa taala umar you have a, a question or a comment please go ahead yes sir sir can you tell anything about the sakina uh, i think i heard what is sakina because i go to tarawih and i have i have heard this word sakina and then the name of harun alaihi salam and musa alaihi salam after it i will have to check and get back to you umar on this one okay okay thank you i will inshallah check and get back to you so you're saying when you went to tarawi you heard about this i will check this yes um, he was this. reciting the quran and then i heard some words sakina and then he, then after the words sakina there came like musa and harun sakina is from uh, the sakina i mean it's like the word it's it's to hold um, or uh, i'll check and get back to you and i will uh, share the response uh, over our uh, whatsapp group inshallah thank you sir okay so action number 1 uh, stay connected to allah subhanahu wa taala at all the times to be content during good times be thankful during bad times stay patient as we saw in the story of uh, musa alaihi salam fir aun as well as uh, the bani israel and how they kept on going um, uh, back and how the firon and his people they were tested they were punished multiple times towards the end uh, and and still uh, at the at the end when the punishments increased they asked musa alaihi salam to take them away and then they will follow his way and they will believe uh, and they will let musa alaihi salam take uh, bani israel with him however when the punishments were removed from allah subhanahu wa taala they went back and they broke their promise so the lesson for us 
in this entire story is that we have to always stay connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not like once we are doing really good in our lives and when we are getting uh, the, the all the jobs and education and wealth and everything as we discussed, we feel, ah, it's all my accomplishment. I am the one and I am a self-made person and all of these terms that we use, um, uh, they are incorrect because everything good is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we have to be thankful for it, for him. And during bad times or tough times or hardships, we have to be patient. Uh, and then point number two, don't be heedless about the signs from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't guide arrogant and heedless people. And we saw an example, we discussed it in detail, that heedless means that basically, even when you warn someone and when you tell someone something, still they don't listen to you. And then they fall into that. So, and then they face the hardship or whatever happens to them. So we as Muslims today, we cannot be heedless. We have to uh, uh, look at the signs from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then seek guidance. Because sometimes people say, ah, if I wanted to be, as we discussed in the class, if I wanted to be guided, then uh, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted me to be guided, I would have been guided. It's not my fault. So, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is controlling everything. I cannot do anything. But that's wrong. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying those people are misguided who do not, uh, who have evil intentions in their heart and they are arrogant. So at the start, they are uh, they don't have the right intentions. Even when sometimes people start to study Islam or Quran or they're searching for a topic, they're trying to find a fault in it. That's a wrong mindset. The right mindset is that you try to open up your heart and mind and try to absorb what is being given to you. And even if you don't understand the logic for, of it or something, you do not just say, ah, see, which is why I don't follow and this is also wrong and this is also wrong and that is wrong. That is the wrong attitude. You have to understand that this is the truth. If you do not understand, that is your lack of understanding. And you need to probably spend more time on things and you need to spend more time on guidance. Don't be arrogant and don't be heedless. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't guide those people. Uh, Alhamdulillah, this is the end of today's lesson.